Hello and welcome to week 12 of Esper's Refit. Just thought we'd uh, start off by showing you the deck and uh, we've had at least four if not five painters at any one time sanding back the uh, micro balloon filled epoxy top coat. So Liz if you swing the camera down you can see this now is all being fed nice and smooth like so. Uh, if you look at the front They've been working on the, the anchor locker lids. We'll take that back a little bit there, but again, we're fairing that nice and smooth. But unfortunately, we've had some delamination. So uh, I'll just show you those patches over here. As we were walking around the deck, you could hear that it was a little bit hollow. And what's happened is the fiberglass has actually lifted up off the deck. So what we did was we went round the boat, just tapping it like so. And we could hear in this area here, this there, and the patch at the back, it looks quite hollow. And unfortunately we've had to cut it away and uh, refill it. Tui continues to work in the aft cabin and is now fashioning new doors for the new cupboards. Tom, meanwhile, is doing exactly the same thing, but at the other end of the boat, concentrating on the new cupboard doors in the forepeak. Cupboards that contain paints, oils and other potions have been veneered on the outside and laminated on the inside. Perched at her new workbench, May sets to with an angle grinder and polishes the chromed deck fittings. It's not just our deck fittings that will look new. Moo and Lek have been busy cleaning the engine, blasting it with acetone before giving it a coat of primer and two coats of all grip. I know fluorescent light isn't particularly uh, flattering in the boat, but uh, you can get an idea now of what the engine's looking like. Obviously we've still got uh, things like the starter motor and the gearbox to put back in but she's looking rather splendid, not bad for a uh, 30 year old engine. We've given our office a new roof, making it much lighter to work in. This week we've been doing a lot of admin and online shopping, making lists of new deck fittings, equipment and fixtures, all to be ordered over the next few weeks. We've also been designing our new tow rail, which you can see here being bent into shape using 21st century technology. In the distance, the clouds start to gather. We've had a clear week of weather, but on Friday, the skies darkened, the heavens opened, and our new roof didn't prove to be as waterproof as we'd have hoped. The work has continued unabashed under the glare of a single fluorescent light. One of the biggest steps of progress we've made this week has been the floor. Uh, we hinted at this last in the last clip. What we've done is we've taken 6mm layers of teak. We have removed the old veneer off the sole boards and we are sticking this down but what we're doing is we're actually taking it right up to the edge so Paul our head carpenter as you can see has been finishing this off beautifully obviously once he uh, he's finished we will then sand this and then put a few layers of polyurethane down on top to protect it Next day the skies cleared and our friend Stuart and his rival named Nomad were ready to launch. Stuart has been in the yard for eight weeks dealing with some minor osmosis and refurbishing his forepeak. At spring high water Nomad's engine started first time and we waved goodbye to another friend. 
So far, seven yachts have come and gone since we've been in the yard. Every Saturday we knock off at four and treat the workers to a few beers. This week, however, we surprised them by asking them to finish up at three. Jamie and Julie, owners of Thea, are almost ready to launch and they put on a little leaving bash. Cheers. That's it for week 12 and uh, we're downing tools a little bit early this Saturday because on Monday we're going to be seeing the launch of Thea. So Jamie and Julia very kindly put on a few beers and uh, to say thank you to all the workers who have been working on their boat. Cheers.